Holly, what do we say to everybody? Hey, welcome back to Leah's Leaves. My garden gnome is here with me. I'm saying that to myself too. Welcome back to my own channel. After a hiatus, I'll show you why. <laughs> we are back. We're back and better than ever. Leah's Leaves this garden season. We'll be making weekly content from here in Western PA. Zone 5A showing you what will be part of my garden. I have a sunny spot for containers just above or just beside the septic sand pit. <laughs> so last year all kinds of things grew here. Red noodle beans, tomatillos, Swiss chard, two rounds of zucchini, Lots of peppers, tomatoes, and flowers like gazania and dwarf sunflowers. Right now it's kind of a mess. But in my imagination, it's going to be gorgeous. This is our herb spiral. Some perennial herbs are in here. The tops are dying off, but the roots are fine. As we get closer to the warm season, I'll top this up with fresh soil and reinforce the cylinders around the edge and then plant dwarf marigolds uh, and dwarf zinnias inside the cylinders to add a pop of color and attract pollinators. Last year, this had sage, oregano, lemon savory, rosemary, lots of basil, and Tiny Tim tomatoes, which are a little micro dwarf tomato. So probably a lot of the same things will go in here this year. That was effective, and I used the herbs in my kitchen. That tub doesn't look like much now. It's all, the surface has died back, but what it actually is, is a moon garden. You can see some of the Dusty Miller is a perennial, but there are other plants in here that are gonna come back and some annuals that I'll plant early. This was a fragrant moon garden. It's all white flowers. Everything that grows here is white. And it will have Nicotiana, night scented stock, alyssum, the dusty miller. And then I had a variety of polar, uh, polar zinnias, which are white, polar bear zinnias and white marigolds, Kilimanjaro African marigolds that grow about as tall as the zinnias. If you've been with my channel a minute, you know that I use this stairwell to grow dwarf varieties of tomatoes and some of my hot peppers. And that's been a very effective thing. It's vertical gardening. It gets things up off the ground. I never have pest pressure in this section and it's visually stimulating and it's a great way to get some of my plants planted without taking up valuable real estate at ground level. This raised bed was added as a last addition just so I could raise some greens in the fall. I didn't cover it or anything so I picked already from it. There is some chijimisai still growing and uh, tatsoi. But these are constructed using planter wall blocks that I got from a box store and two by six beams. And that's it, no tools required. So I'm gonna be building more of those. They're very cost effective, they're mobile and portable, uh, and they're easy to construct and I don't need any handy tools. I can do it all just by stacking and maneuvering. Every year a highlight for me is growing in my Rusted Garden Homestead Special Edition Green Stock, which is obviously not green. But I love the color. In this I grow greens, micro tomatoes, herbs, and uh, dwarf varieties of, of um, flowers. And I'll bring you here next to it. If you tracked with me last year, and one of the reasons my channel went on pause is because there's a natural gas line that runs here through the yard, and it needed excavated. They took my beautiful, beautiful, well-aged, old, old garden soil, 
filled with worms and all kinds of delicious microorganisms and they churned it up put all that underneath a whole uh, eight feet worth of clay <laughs> and then they planted grass seed on top of it so my garden became a yard this year I am reestablishing a, a new above ground no-till bed but it'll be in a different location and orientation than the previous bed now that some of the trees around here have grown it means that the sunlight has changed and I need to be growing in a different direction this time so this is the beginnings of it I started laying newspaper I have cardboard newspaper and I'll be shaping out the the area and then some of it I'll be piling just thick 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 well-aged composted manure and doing no-till and then in one section I'll be ad assembling additional beds like the one I showed you and doing some above ground gardening as well in a raised bed as this develops it's going to look really good but it's going to take time to build soil health and assemble the supplies for the beds and such I'm hoping by April uh, and early May you'll begin to really see the vision for what the garden is going to become in its next season this is the south side of my house those big tall things there those are hollyhocks black and pink hollyhocks I'm gonna cut those back and fresh growth will come those are perennial and they've been here a couple years now so I'll be able to actually divide these out and separate them and then plant them and have more hollyhocks to give away or to plant in other parts of the area but this is the the sunniest little patch of land on the whole property when that apple tree <laughs> isn't full of leaves and icky fruit I'd love to take that tree down I rent my property so I don't have the authority to remove the trees nor do I have the money to call a tree service and do it anyway I do have a chainsaw though and I'm happy to use it if I get permission just to add some airflow and improve the sunlight these trees are just old enough now that they're hindering the garden growth and they're not fruiting very well anyway but on the south side this is where I'll be growing okra uh, I've tried corn a couple years I had modest success with and I'm gonna give it one more shot before I think of another plan for my sweet corn and then um, pumpkins and squash love this area so it originally started as a three sisters kind of embankment and then I added the hollyhocks um, after the first year of sunflowers grew here so I'll keep the hollyhocks I'll add sunflowers in uh, in the open patch that I just showed you back over here but in a sunnier spot toward the middle and then this south side will grow okra for sure some sort of squash, some bush beans, sort of a three sisters thing. And anything else that requires a little more light and ambient heat from the side of the building. The last thing I'll show you is the jugs. These are jugs that I used last year and uh, I'll be repurposing those. It's actually going to happen next week um, where I'll be tearing them open, disinfecting them, cleaning them out and reusing them again to do some winter sowing for perennial flowers, herbs, and some of my coal crops. I have some onion seeds started indoors under, under grow lights right now too, and I'm gonna add some to jugs just to hedge my bets and get some extra ones going. I love the winter sown method. It's a very effective way to start seeds without taking up room or needing additional grow lights then I can use my grow lights indoors to concentrate on giving my hot peppers a head start so the whole thing's kind of a mess right now but the transformation is finally beginning this is the fun part this is where you take all of last year's dead ugly growth pull it trim it organize salvage the old soil and repurpose it pull up all of those plant markers repurpose those clean out the containers take an inventory of what I have what I need and it, it feels 
like you're already growing a garden even though none of the plants are actually viable yet in our western PA weather. Gardening really is a year-round activity. I especially love this little container area. There's so many things I can do and I can swap out different flower varieties this year. I can try different varieties of greens. Uh, the bush zucchini that I grew in this little pink kitty pool last year were very effective. I had no problems at all with vine borers or any issues like that so I'll be using that and this kitty pool was a pool that was my wading pool but this year I'm actually going to drill some holes in it and and plant more in it because this is a nice sunny spot I don't have many sunny places on the property so I need to take advantage of the ones that I get so that'll have a whole new use and then over here, you can't see it anymore. I had a structure um, constructed out of these construction cylinders, these pipes. And what I need to do here, and I started yesterday, I just ran out of time before I had to go to work, is rake this hump. There's a mound here of soil that I've been using for a couple years. Rake it over, uh, pull all of the grass seed out of it, pull all the weeds out of it and then reconstruct my frame here. And then when my delivery of compost comes, I'll fill it and plant in it. And this year I trellised um, Kentucky Wonder pole beans behind a couple of tomato plants. And that worked really well. I had some marigolds in the area to deter pests off of my tomato plants. And it was a nice pop of color. It gets a lot of sunlight and it's right here at the access point of my driveway uh, so it's visible from the road and aesthetically pleasing from my kitchen door so it had beauty and function it just needs to be reframed so that it looks nice again this garden shed used to be down in the other yard it had to be moved when the excavation started and that afforded me the opportunity to uh, Put some shelves in there do some sorting in a future video i'm going to actually take you on a tour of my little shed there and show you what it is that are the essential tools and amendments that i use to have an effective growing season the last thing i want to say is i hope that you are having a good growing season i haven't been on recently i'm looking forward to creating weekly content now as i said earlier and getting back into the rhythm both of gardening and of um, up, uploading helpful information from Leah's Leaf. So I want to hear from you in the comments. What are tips and tricks, hacks? What are things that you like to grow or that you want to learn how to grow? Um, if you're starting a garden for the first time ever, what is overwhelming to you? What questions do you have? Those are the things I would love to address in future videos. And I want to alert you to one really cool project that I did in the off season. You'll hear more about it in next week's video, but it is gardening content and guidance for adults with ADHD, which is a mental disorder that I have. And I have created a couple of things. There's a printable worksheet that's a checklist of activities. ADHD people can function on checklists because you can focus on one task at a time, check it off, build momentum, and get stuff done. So I have an ADHD gardening checklist. I have a one hour webinar introducing you to the therapeutic benefits of gardening for ADHD and giving you some insights on how you can establish and maintain a successful garden, letting your ADHD work for you and not against you. And the last resource is an ebook called The Therapeutic Benefits of Gardening for ADHD, Seeds of Hope. So I'm going to uh, share links to those resources in the comment section and then do a little more in-depth in discovery of those with you next week. In the meantime, I'm learning a lot. I'm sharing it here. Come grow with me. Bye.